Hello, welcome to another week of the Trademark Sports Podcast. So we're talking all things Parramatta Eels and Brad Arthur, obviously, because that's in the news. Um, then a bit of Wayne Bennett stuff as well as we're going to go through my revised Origin teams because I made it like a couple of weeks ago, and as we know, in the 2024 season, it has been injuries galore, so there's lots of changes to be made. Then we're going to go through my tips and then answer your guys' questions, which is a fair few this week, so um, stay tuned for that one if you have asked a question. But... Without further ado, if you are a fan of the Trademark Sport Podcast, make sure you go over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star rating. It helps out more than you know. Subscribe on YouTube and make sure you like the video, leave a comment and all that good stuff. So, let's get into it. Let's talk some Parramatta Eels. So, I don't have any issues with like the Eels sacking Brad Arthur, just when you look at it on face value, um, in terms of like, yes, look, the Eels results haven't been up to standard for probably the last season and a half. Um, and like for ever since they made that grand final, basically, and they probably should be doing better. Yes. However, the issue for me lies with the Eels getting rid of Brad Arthur at this time is the fact that you look at it, you've got Mitch Moses and Clint Gutherson out at the moment. So the two best players that they're playing without week in, week out, which obviously makes it so much more of a hard task in the NRL. And the other thing is there's no one else to come in to replace him. They've missed out on Wayne Bennett. Wayne Bennett told them he's not coming and they still gave him the sack, I think. Like, when you look around the league, there's honestly not that many options available or ready to go, and that sort of thing. Like, there's a few coaches in, in development, but I don't think anyone's ready to take over um, as a, a full-time head coach just yet. Uh, a couple stats here as well. Brad Arthur's winning percentage for the Eels was 51% over the 10 seasons that he was there. They replaced him with Trent Barrett for the remainder of the season, who has a 31% win percentage as an NRL coach. That's pretty yuck. Um, and you look at like, what Brad Arthur's done for that club. When he first took over, they went through so much misery. Um, heaps of like wooden spoons, lots of salary cap drama, all this sort of thing. Dug him out of a hole, got him to a grand final. Um, and now they're on the downward trajectory. But you look at all those players that lost from the grand final. Papali is gone. Um, you also lost Reid Money, who was really, really key to that team. Uh, there's another one as well. Uh, a couple, actually, Nia Kore and Kafusi, all left from that grand final team. Um, and then that's the thing. Like I think when that, cl- uh, that coach has been at that club for so long, all the players love him. Um, the thing that I probably would have liked them to see them do with Brad Arthur was give him one more roster change, uh, give him one more roster refresh, and just say, right, this is your very last crack. Um, and if you can't make it work with this team, then we're going to part ways. And I feel like Brad Arthur probably would have agreed to that. Go, yeah, look, fair enough. We haven't won a comp as of yet. Um, so that. Let's give it one more try, and then that would have been it. That's probably the way I would have gone about it, I think, as well. The Parramatta CEO coming out and saying, oh, yeah, we've been talking to Wayne Bennett for three weeks. I get it. It's business, but it is at the same time pretty disrespectful, in my opinion. For someone who's been there for so long, a really integral part of the, the club. I think he's Parramatta's longest-standing coach ever in terms of just um, like actual time frame. So... Show the men a little bit more respect. It's like in the day before his 21st birthday, uh, 21st birthday, 50th birthday. Um, yeah, all class really from Parramatta, isn't it? Um, so, look, best of luck to Para and Trent Barrett and whoever comes and takes over as their full-time coach moving forward. But I just think Brad Arthur, a little bit hard done by. Uh, I don't think, I think Para friends, like, so that, that was the thing. It was like, they came out and said, like, they felt like the club has stagnated a bit. And it was probably true. But again, I just think give the man one more crack at it with a different playing roster within that club. There's a bunch of young guys coming through that probably going to inject a life into this team um, and that sort of thing moving forward. And I feel like Brad Arthur would have been a very good coach to ever see that. But look, so be it. As I said, rugby league is a business and that's just how these things go. Um, but on top of this as well, Wayne Bennett is going back to South Sydney. Huge news. I'm sort of just sitting here thinking who the Dolphins players is going to bring over. Um, because when you look at Cody Nicarima and Mark Nichols currently at the Dolphins who play for the Rabbitohs there, Jaden Sua did it a couple of times. Um, I think Jairo maybe even might have played under him at the Broncos and then at South Sydney. Um, look, Darius Boyd's obviously the famous one. There's so many names. Um, but I do think it's the perfect thing for the Rabbitohs with this roster. Their roster, without a doubt, is top four. On paper, um, it's ridiculous. I know they've had some pretty gnarly injuries and whatnot, but even still, they've got superstars on that like, on that team, and there's teams in the comp who don't have superstars in the whole roster who are doing better than them. So, basically, 
as enough said. Um, I think very good man manager will get the best out of the troll, hopefully. Um, but I can't just think like he he knows that roster, he knows that team. He can get the best out of them. They got to a grand final. They just unfortunately lost to probably the best team of the NRL generation. Yeah, that certainly it makes it tough for them. Um, all right, let's get into my revised Origin teams. So. Basically, my team, I posted this. I'll go find it on my Instagram real quickly. Trademark Sports with two S's at the end of sports. For those who don't follow it, make sure you go over there and do that. Just be a G. Um, so I posted this two weeks ago, 7th of May. Today, day of recording is the 22nd of May. So my team, and I posted this day, was Dylan Edwards, Brian Toto, Tom Dubovic, who's now injured, Bradman Best, who's now injured, Stephen Crichton, Nico Hines, Nathan Cleary, who's now injured, Payne Haas, Abby Korosau, Jake Jaborovic, Lee Martin, Mole Olikawatu, Isaiah Yo, Matt Burton, Stefano Utikamanu, Regan Campbell-Gillard, and Cameron McInnes. So, my team now. I'd have Dylan Edwards at fullback still. I just think like he has to get picked. I know they're probably going to pick James Tedesco, but this is my team. I want to pick Dylan Edwards. Then on the wings, Brian Toto, obviously, and Zach Lomax. I think they're probably the best two in form wingers for the Blues at the moment. And then in the centres, Stephen Crichton's going to move into the centres for me now with these injuries. And on the other centre, I do want Matt Burden in there, I think. Like, I know with all of the injuries to the halves and that sort of thing, people are talking about him for 5 8, but I kind of just want to see him out in the centres, to be honest. Um, and here's why. So my halves are going to be Nico Hines at 6. And I believe next round, Mitch Moses is returning, which gives him two games to prove that he's up to speed and fit enough for Origin. That's what I want as my halves pairing. I think that if they're working together, Nico Hines and Mitch Moses can take the pressure off each other, like allow them to flow in and out of being an organizer and running and that sort of thing. I just think it gives you more direction and dyn- like um, flow and like dynamics to the attack, uh, more attacking weapons, weapons and options and whatnot. Then... Front row, still Payne Haas, Api Korosau, Jake Jaborovic. Second row, Angus Gryden is starting for me. He's just been unbelievable. Uh, Liam Martin is the other second rower. And Isaiah Yo a lock because Cameron Murray is not there. Then at the 14, I've got Cameron McInnes because he can come on and play dummy half to give Korosau a rest and then he can just work as a middle forward. Uh, the rest of the bench, Regan Kimmel Gillard as well, Stefano Uduikamanu, and then Hamole Olakwatu coming off the bench now that I have Angus Gryden in the team. Uh, and then for Queensland, which I believe I, I made it at the same time as I made the uh, Blues team. But yes, this one was posted on the 11th of May. Um, and I had Reese Walsh, Selwyn Cobo, The Hammer, Valentine Holmes, Xavier Coates, Cameron Munster, who's now injured, Taylor Cherry Evans, Lindsay Collins, Harry Grant, Ruben Cotter, Jeremiah Nanai, Dave Fafita, Pat Carrigan, Ben Hunt, Jermaine Hopgood, Tom Flegler, who looks like he won't be fit in time for Origin, and Jaden Sewer. Um, so now, there's not too many t- changes to be made to my Queensland team, um, but my Queensland team that I have revised now is Reese Walsh, Xavier Coates, Valentine Holmes, The Hammer, Selwyn Cobo, Tommy Deedon comes in as the six. I think he's definitely the next best option. You could also have Ezra Mam is another one pushing for that um, spot, but I think, honestly, I know Cowboys haven't been in great form, but there's no doubt about it that Tommy Deedon has been one of the competition's best halves, and he just has that origin mentality in him like that. Uh, cover tackle against Selwyn Cobbo, I believe it was, a couple of rounds. Tells you all you need to know, really. Um, Daly Cherry Evans, Lindsay Collins, Harry Grant, Ruben Cotter. Then my back row is going to be Jeremiah Nanai, David Fafita, Patrick Carrigan, with a bench of Ben Hunt. Uh, Mo Fodawaker coming in for Tom Flegler. And then, because um, I think Fodawaker, the last two or three weeks, has been sensational. To be honest, you got Jermaine Hopgood come on to play as a middle. You can push Carrigan to the front row and give one of those guys a spell, that sort of thing. But like Ruben Cotter will go all day as well. Anyway, um, and then at 17, I still do have Jaden Sua. So a couple of changes here and there. Hopefully, fingers crossed, just for the state of origin in general. So there's probably close to 10 players across the both sides who would be starting playing origin or whatnot that are now out just due to injury and that sort of unfortunate thing. Um, all right, let's get into my tips for Indigenous round, starting off with Bulldogs versus the Dragons. Bulldogs, um, let's just quickly pull up the ladder as well. So I know the Dragons are sitting ninth, I believe, um, which if I had told me that at the start of the season, I probably would have taken that considering everyone tipped us for the spoon. Um, and Doggies, they're in better form, they're in 11th. So they're both, well, Doggies 4 and 6, Dragons 5 and 5 at this stage. Um, 
Oof. It's... I know it's meant to be Bulldogs home game, but it's at a core. It's just yucky. Um, I don't want to be biased, but I'm going to be biased. I'm tipping the Dragons here. Uh, I just think they'll be up for a week off, like, good win into the bye, um, and then another week off just to hone what they're going to do, come up fresh. Uh, hopefully, I just think the Dragons will get the win there. And it is the Cowboys versus uh, the Tigers. Um, the Tigers, who started the season okay, but are now 2-8. and eight. Um Lost their last six in a row, I believe. Cowboys, who again haven't been fantastic, they're one and four in their last five. Uh, but up in Townsville makes it very tough for the Tigers to go up there and get the Chockeys. So I am going to tip the Cowboys in that one. Um, and then it's Manly versus Storm. I just feel like Manly are going to get up for it and get the win. I don't know what it is. Um, I think maybe like you look at the sides. Yes, Cameron Munster's out, which is tough. But in saying that, Jerome Hughes is back for the, sh- uh, the Storm, which is a huge in. Um, you've also got like guys like Nathan Brown, Ben Chaboyevich, J- um, Jason Saab back in for Manly. So I just, I don't know, Battle of Brookie, something about it. Manly's going to get up for it. I can just feel it. Um, and then Saturday's games, Raiders versus the Roosters, 6th versus 7th in Canberra. You probably could make a um, argument that the Raiders could could get up for this one and win this one. Um, it'd be a very Raiders thing to do. No, Josh Papali'i does make it hard again for the Raiders. Um, I just think the way that the Roosters have played over the last month, yes, they lost last week, but it was still a very good game. They played some very good footy against Sharks, who are arguably the best team in the comp at the moment. So I do think that the Roosters will go out to Canberra and get a nice win for them. Um, keep moving up the ladder. Then we do have Sharks versus Panthers. going to be a great game. Um, Jack Cole comes in. Um... Oh, he might have played last week. I'm not too shocked. Sorry. Um, but, yeah, Jerome Luai basically leading that team around the park. Just Nico Hines and the Sharks are in such unbelievable form. I do think that they will um, head to Shark Park and get the Chockeys there. Like, found a stat the other day that the Panthers haven't won at Shark Park since 2012. Um, and I reckon that trend's going to continue. Then it is a really, really gross game. Uh, Rabbitohs versus the Eels. Rabbitohs... Obviously, are known to have like a lot of Indigenous players within their squad, so they will get up for Indigenous round, you would think. Um, oh, Jack White named in the six. That's exciting and interesting. Um, sorry. And then the Eels, just off the back of a pretty horror week. Coach gets sacked. Well, he's been in pretty bad form. I, just, I can see the Rabbitohs hopefully finally turning it on, making it click and getting a win. And we've got Broncos versus the Titans um, at Suncorp. It's 5th versus 16th. Broncos haven't played the best footy as of yet, really, this so far this season. Billy Walters comes back in. Obviously, still without Adam Reynolds, Payne Haas named. I just, look, Broncos should get the win here. And then, last game of the round, because, of course, the Knights have the bye, is the Warriors versus the Dolphins. Um, it's tough, this one. Like, I don't... I'd, the Warriors winning against Penrith last week really throws a spatter in the works because obviously the Warriors haven't been fantastic so far this year. Dolphins have been really, really good, um, even without a lot of their players um, like being selected, basically, um, like being injured and whatnot. Yeah, I just... I mean, it'd be nice to see the Warriors going a bit of a run again, but I do think the Dolphins will get the Chockeys over there. So my tips for this week are the Dragons, Cowboys, Manly, Roosters, Sharks, Rabbits, Broncos, and the Dolphins. Let me know what yours are in the comments of this video. Uh, And then let's get into your questions. Lastly, to round off the podcast. First off from MaxiBob4801, it says, do Souths become instant 2025 grand final team after signing Wayne? Grand final team is tricky to say. I do think they're going to be like... As I said before, Souths are a top four side on paper. Um, Wayne Bennett will get the best out of their players. And look, I'd be very, very, very shocked if with Wayne Bennett at the helm, Souths was the eight. Um, I'll say that for sure. Like, I know they're entrenched down the bottom of the ladder at the moment. But, man, Wayne Bennett, he just knows how to get the best out of his players, doesn't he? Really, like, the only club he's ever really struggled at was the Knights. And there was stuff going on with Nathan Tickler and the board. And just the club was a mess. Wasn't Wayne Bennett's fault. Um, so yeah, look, grand final team, not too sure, um, but top four, top five team, I think so. 
And then MacMaza6 says, Do I think the Cowboys will make the top eight? Going to be honest, they've got to really show me a lot more than what they are right now to say that. Their defense has been whack all year. Um, and, like, yes, that attack's really good as well, but you can't rely on scoring 40 points a game to get yourself into the finals. Again, like the Rabbitohs and the Eels and all these other clubs, I mean, well, most clubs, really, they've got the roster to do it. We've seen them. We made They made top four two years ago. Like, they can do it. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on at the club to sort of give off the results that um, that they have, like, that they've been showing. But and I'm, I'm not sure how you turn around. I feel like you just got to change the defensive structure, which is too hard to do during the season. This, year, this season, again, I feel like the Cowboys missed the eight. So who knows? Todd Payton could be the next coach on the chopping block. Um, then Colt White 10 says, who has the nicest Indigenous jersey? This pains me to say a little bit, to be honest, uh, because as a Dragons fan, I am meant to dislike the Sharks heavily. I don't, um, I don't like them, but I don't dislike them that much. But I think by far and away that they're... Uh, indigenous jersey this year is the best. I reckon it's a gorgeous bit of kit. Uh, I think it fades from like the dark, like a darkish black, blue, black at the top, and then fades down to a really nice popping blue. There's some stingrays in there and everything. Like I think it's just a lovely jersey. Um, and yeah, for me, absolutely the Sharkies ones up there. Um, other ones that come to mind that are really good. I do like Paras one. Um, Oh, I'm trying to think. There's another one that I think is really nice. I'll quickly have a look at it on, I think, Zero Tackle post. Like, I have a thing where I have all the jerseys there. Um, in terms of ones that are sort of on the fence about, I think I, I like the fact that Manly have changed their sponsor for the Indigenous Round jersey. They don't have points bet. Uh, they've got URM, which is nice. Uh, and then Dragons ones, okay. I sort of re- genuinely really like the Dragons Indigenous jerseys, but I'm on the fence with it so far. This year, I don't really like is the Dolphins. I think they've done really well with their Indigenous jersey so far this season. Uh, next question is from James underscore Sand underscore one three one two zero seven. What place do you reckon the Dargons will finish? Obviously, we're currently ninth at the moment, sitting five and five, so very smack bang in the middle. Um, and I'd love us to probably stay around there, maybe bump up at least one spot, mate. The finals would be lovely, but I can sort of see after Origin and that sort of fatigue setting in with like a new system and that sort of thing that we might drop a couple of places. Real, like an ideal world for me to be honest, probably like apart from finals, uh, would be sitting between like 10th and 12th. Um, I'd probably be happy with that to be honest, because again, like we're expected to finish bottom four. Um, and I think we certainly can see some improvements with Shane Flanning. It's just about that consistency. I think as fatigue sets in, that's going to become less and less of a, like a thing we see with the Dragons. Um, even though they're probably one of the more inconsistent teams in the comp at the moment. Um, but yeah, I. Anywhere between 10th and 14th, I feel like they can sit there. But it all depends as well, because the Rabbitohs might flick a switch and turn on and become absolute guns again. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, that's where I think they'll finish. And Robert.Golding.144 has asked, who do you think is the best man to coach the Eels next year and beyond? Um, Brad Arthur. Now, nah, not not Trent Barrett. Like, that's just, you look at who's out there, there's really no one like... And these guys that come to mind is like Anthony Griffin, who avoid um, Justin Holbrook, who's he hasn't been bad and a real coach, hasn't been a good one either. Um, you've also got like Jason Riles, but I can't like there was a thing saying I heard to, like on the news today talking about how um, Wayne Bennett wouldn't get not Wayne Bennett, Craig, uh, Craig Bellamy wouldn't get in the way of him if he um, was given the job. And I think well, hang on, he sort of got off of the Dragons' job and he got in the way of him there, so. I'm not too sure what the go is there. There's probably an assistant coach out there somewhere who's killing it. Um, and they'll get given the gig, like, if they can find, like, an Andrew Webster type that no one really ever knew about and then come out and be a good coach, that'd be probably the ideal situation for um, the Eels, actually. As I say that, one comes to mind who I really hope they don't take. That's Dean Young. I think he'd be a fantastic coach. Um, and, yes, so I hope that they don't take him away from the Dragons, but... Who knows? Like that's seriously. That's why I can't get my head around the fact that they've sacked Brad Arthur because there's just no one that pops to mind available on the market. Uh, and then next, second last question is going to be from all right, Ekaima ninety seven E C H A I M A ninety seven. 
sorry for butchering that one. He says, are you going to hit up Magic Round next year? I'd love to. Um, so a bit of, bit of personal life stuff. Uh, I'm in my last year of uni and a lot of like, like work prac and that sort of thing. So it wasn't really feasible this year, but hopefully, fingers crossed, graduate this year a bit more free time, a bit more disposable income. Hopefully, you can get up to Magic Grand next year. It looks like an absolute laugh. Um, and the other thing as well, Dragons didn't play this year. If I go up there, I would, would like to watch my team play um, as much as I like to have the atmosphere and watch the other teams play as well. I want to go up there and watch the Dragons. Hopefully, fingers crossed, to get their first ever Magic Grand win. And then last question for this week's podcast is from Caden.h13. It says, do you think Lomax will backflip on his deal with Brad Arthur being sacked? Now, there was reports coming out that the Eels had to smooth some stuff over with Zach Lomax about, in terms of just luck. Obviously, Brad Arthur was in the ear of Zach Lomax. He wanted to come over. Lomax liked it, wanted to play for him. And then the Eels probably gave him a guarantee as well, saying, oh, no, Brad will be here. He'll be your coach. And then... Obviously, now he's not, so there's probably some stuff in his contract, maybe, hopefully, that says if Brad Arthur's not the coach, that he can that he can stay at the Dragons, because I would absolutely love that. Um, I don't think he'll backflip on his deal, though. I think he will honour it, because, um, I look, I think he just wants to get out of the Dragons. Um, I'm not sure, because I think if he backflips, he has to then be playing at the Dragons next year. Like That was like sort of the what I got from the Isaiah Papali'i situation with the tw- when he went to the go to sign with the Tigers. Um, so, yeah, for me, I don't think that Zach Lomax will backflip, honestly, solely on the fact that it means he'll have to play for the Dragons moving forward, if I am correct in saying that. Could be wrong. He could be allowed to move, like, backflip on that deal and go somewhere else. I'm not too sure because, like, since that Papali'i situation as well, we've had a new CBA with the RLPA and the NRL, that sort of thing. So Zach Lomax could be able to go to the Storm, or something ridiculous like that. South, who needs outside backs? There'll be someone. Um, the Tigers, I'm thinking about it. Titans. Sorry, now I'm just going on an absolute rant about where Zach Lomax would play some good footy. The Roosters, whew, they got some money now too. Damn, let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, I do think We'll see Zach Lomax still line up for the Eels in 2025. That's going to end another week of the Trademark Sports Podcast. If you liked it, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here, drop a comment about um, who your team's playing this week, how you reckon they'll go, what your origin teams are, um, and just any general things you picked up from the video. Our Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that good stuff, five-star rating, please helps out the channel and the page more than you ever could imagine. Um, and yeah, Good luck to your team this weekend, unless you are a Doggies fan. Uh, Remember to Scotty, drink your water. Bradman, do your best.